Hi everyone, my name is Avadon Raggio, and I am the Standards Coordinator for the Handweavers Guild of Boulder Annual Sale. This is a presentation about standards, uh, what kinds of items we accept at the sale, uh, the different techniques that we accept at the sale, and how to make sure that your item is ready for the sale. Uh, please uh, ask questions, save your questions until the end of the presentation. So the purpose of standards is to ensure that all of the items that are put up for sale at the Handweavers Guild of Boulder annual show and sale are textile related, that they are made uh, with textiles and with uh, a, an accepted textile technique to ensure that all the items are finished and well executed and thus represent the guild and its members well. And finally, that they are safe for their intended use. The standards for the sale are updated every year by the standards committee. We meet in February and March of every year to take in feedback from previous sales and to update standards so that the interests of members as well as um, the, the types of techniques and technology that members are using um, are reflected in what we show the public at the sale. For example, um, 10 years ago, uh, machine knitting wasn't as common. People were not using that, but now we have a, a category for machine and loom knitting because it's reflecting what our artists are doing. The purpose of this meeting is not to converse about or debate standards. Standards for 2020 are set. Uh, however, if you want to be a part of the standards committee for 2021, please uh, look at the beat in January and February where we will solicit members uh, for the standards committee. Participating in the standards committee as we are revising standards counts towards your workers shift for the sale. And it's a great way to get involved and be a part of um, determining how we present ourselves to the world through our standards. So if you're interested in that, uh, make a note on your calendar for January and February to, um, to be a part of the committee. All right. All of the information in this uh, presentation is available in the rules and regulations document. Uh, here is the URL for it. And I'm going to share a different screen briefly so that I can show you how to get from the homepage of the Handweavers Guild to the rules and regulations document. Bear with me just a moment, please. All right. So you should see a web browser. This is the handweaversgoldboulder.org, our homepage. Sign in in the upper right corner and then go to the Members tab. Under the Members tab, you'll scroll down to Sale Information. Click on that. And then you want to look at Sale Documents. So you can click this link or scroll down to Sale Documents. And then the third one down, 2020 Rules and Regulations. This is the document that has everything that we need. So I encourage you to download it and save it or bookmark it. And now we're going to go back to the, the uh, PowerPoint. Uh, the standards uh, are on page two of the rules and regulations document. Uh, ready for sale information is on page three and our technique list as on pages 12 through 13. Uh, the techniques list describes how things are made and we're going to be going through them one by one. And the techniques are numbered for, uh, for categorization, for when you're putting the items into the artist data uh, entry database. And that will be covered in a different Curious About the Sales session. All right. The first technique is technique zero, quilting, piecing, and applique. For the purposes of the guild, these are the definitions that we use for piecing and applique and quilting. Quilting must have three layers of fabric at least, um, must be stitched together. 
uh, piecing is, we make a distinction between piecing and sewing because we are the Handweavers Guild and not a sewing guild. Sometimes there is overlap, but for the purposes of the Handweavers of Boulder sale, piecing refers to making an entirely new piece of whole fabric out of smaller pieces of fabric, arranging them in a, arranging them in a way that is clearly artistic and intentional. Constructing an item, for example, using commercial fabric to sew a jacket, does not count as piecing for our purposes. And if you have specific questions about your items, please come, uh, well, please see me. You can email me, my email is that will be at the end of the presentation, or you can ask that specific question at the end of this presentation. Um, quilting, um, our, our functional definition is that it's three layers, a quilt top, batting, and backing that are stitched together. Applique must be stitched on for inclusion in the handweaver's uh, sale. It cannot be just ironed on, it cannot just be glued, it has to be stitched on as well. So an example is uh, we, there are often many beautiful quilts at the Handweaver's Guild sale. Here are a couple of other examples. And you can see this piece has been extensively stitched. It does not have to be hand stitched, it can be machine stitched. Um, but where we draw the line is we need to see artistic intention in what you're doing. Here's another piece. All right. Our second category is bead and wire weaving and wrapping. So uh, bead weaving is a beadwork technique uh, in which seed beads are woven together using thread to create a flat, fl a flat fabric or a three-dimensional shape. Here are some examples of bead weaving. Now it's important to note that uh, beads that are just simply strung, that's insufficient. They, there needs to be some weaving together. Our third category is embroidery or stitching. Uh, so hand-stitched decoration using a needle to apply thread and other materials to fabric. This can be embellishment, it can be um, the whole makeup of the piece. This includes cross stitch uh, and black work. Technique three is felting. We define felting as permanent interlacement of wool and other fibers by means of hot soap, uh, sorry, hot water, soap, and agitation, or via needle felting. Uh, felting fiber so that it interacts with uh, and combines with woven fabric, such as Nuno felting, we'd love to see that as well. So here's some needle felting there. This is wet felting, needle felting, and we love to see the Nuno felting. Sometimes artists want to make things with uh, commercial fabric that they've bought, or for example, sweaters that they've gotten at a thrift store and then intentionally felted. Um, if the only intentional creative thing that you have done, if the only change that you have made to the fabric is that you've bought commercial fabric and, and felted it in a washing machine, that by itself is insufficient. Uh, you need to do, you need to apply another technique to that machine felted fabric in order for it to be admissible to our sale. Hand knit and hand crochet is uh, technique number four. So pulling loops through loops. Technique five is lace and knotting. This includes tatting, bobbin lace, and macrame. Painting and dyeing includes lots of techniques, and uh, for the purposes of this sale, they must be applied to fabric. So fabric marbling, uh, there's an example of shibori, which is a very technical tie-dye on the right here, marbling on the left. Um, uh, let's see, stamping, echo dyeing, painting, 
These are all techniques that are accepted under painting and dyeing. A note about tie dyeing. Um, we want to avoid in the sale things that you can buy elsewhere. So the tie dye that you might see in shops on Pearl Street, for example, it's wild, it's eye caching, it's, it takes some skill to do. But what we want to show at the Handweavers Guild of Boulder sale is, are things that are unique. So an intentional design, uh, not something that looks more haphazard. Yes, this sounds subjective, which is why we have a committee to decide these things. So if you have questions about this, please ask us. Handmade paper is technique seven, made from pulp, mold, and decal by the artist. I'm a, sorry, I don't have any pictures of this uh, for our presentation right now. Uh, but if you have made the paper, uh, then we would love to have it. We consider handmade paper to be a textile for the purposes of our sale. Items made from commercial paper are not allowed unless an additional accepted technique has been applied to it. For example, uh, if you've taken pieces of paper and woven them together, you've done weaving. That is a technique that we accept. Um, but commercial paper by itself is not an accepted technique. All right, then hand spinning. Uh, using a spindle or a wheel to make yarn. The yarn that you sell at the sale must be suitable for further yarn work. For example, if someone, uh, if you are putting yarn in the sale, it has to be in a skein or wound in a ball so that someone who doesn't spin, someone who just, uh, who just wants to use the yarn can easily use it. If you sell art yarn, the yarn uh, must still be suitable for further yarn work. Whatever you want to spin, we would love to have. Technique nine uh, is weaving or interlacement. So this can be done with yarn, as we see here, but you can do this technique with lots of other fibers. So basket making is weaving. Um, on the left here, I believe this is paper that has been woven together. And in this case, it doesn't matter whether the paper was handmade or not. Uh, it can be commercial paper, but a technique, the technique of weaving, the technique of interlacement has been done to it. Um, therefore, uh, it is acceptable to us. And here's another example of weaving. Technique 10 is fiber preparation uh, and yarn. So uh, the yarn in this category is yarn that has not been hand spun. It has been commercially spun, but the fiber that makes that it has been commercially spun into yarn comes from the artist's own animals. For example, I have an Angora rabbit named Freitas. So if I gathered her fiber, sent it to a fiber mill to be spun, um, and then wanted to sell it, I would do so under this technique because I prepared the, I, well, I had a hand in preparing the fiber. Um, so the fiber must be from the artist's own animals or it must be dyed or prepared, blended by the artist. Technique 11 is left vacant for future creativity. Mm -hmm. Technique 12, this is a new category for us, uh, handmade fiber tools. So these are handmade tools for doing any of the above fiber art techniques. Technique 12 does not include accessories such as buttons or shawl pins. It includes tools, for example, um, these are, uh, let's see, on the, the left there are holders for balls of yarn so that it unwinds cleanly for whoever is using it. And we have hand-turned wood handles on crochet hooks. Since this category is still provisional, we're still working out what we want to see there. If you have handmade fiber tools that you would like to put in the sale, please make an appointment to uh, talk with someone from Standards uh, by October 1st, 2020.
Technique th 13 is frame or loom knitting. Hand-operated hand home machines uh, are allowed for this. And uh, again, I apologize. I do not have a picture of this, but for next year, we will. The last technique we have to talk about is technique 20, which is a combination of the above uh, techniques. So for example, this hat was hand knit from hand spun and hand dyed yarn. So that's, uh, well, it was a hand dyed roving that was then hand spun and then hand knit. So that's three possible categories. We're putting it into technique 20, it's a combination. This piece also is a combination of felting and bead weaving. There are some strung beads in this piece, the pearls, uh, but the artist has also shown two accepted techniques. There's the felting of the balls and uh, the, the rest of the necklace that is bead weaving. This bag was crocheted and then felted. So it is a combination of techniques. All right, so those are the techniques that are uh, accepted by the Hand Weavers Guild currently. As I said in the beginning, these are, well, they're set now, they're set for 2020, but we revise these techniques every year. As far as being ready for the sale, readiness for the sale doesn't pertain to the quality or the type of item submitted for the sale, but rather their presentation for sale. Uh, please see the rules and regulations, page three, for all of the specifics, but I want to go over some of the most important points and the most often confused points right here. So, A, the items must be professionally presented and ready to go home with the consumer. So, if they're flat items such as towels, scarves, they must they need to be ironed and pressed flat. Um, they must be ready to be hung up on the walls. Skeins of yarn should be secured with figure eight ties. Um, let's see, items that are sold as sets must be securely uh, connected to each other. B, tags with your artist information and your barcode must be firmly attached to the item. We strongly suggest using pearl cotton and an overhand knot. All items in the Handweavers Guild of Boulder annual show and sale must have care and content labels. And these labels and tags must be securely attached to each of the items. The only exception to this rule are single-use items such as greeting cards. And when required by law, uh, you must sew care labels onto items. The FTC requires that garments have care instructions on a permanent label sewn into the garment. There are more details on what the Hand Weavers Guild of Boulder considers garments uh, on rules and regulations. And D, jewelry and other small items should be mounted on cardstock to deter theft with labels regarding fibers and metals in use in the item uh, for consideration of those with allergies. So professionally presented, ready to be displayed and go home for wall art. Uh, wall art uh, hangings must have appropriate and professional quality hanging hardware already installed. So this is an excellent example. I don't know what this type of hanging hardware is called, but this is what we're looking for. Uh, another accepted uh, professional wall hanging, let's see, it's uh, like this here. You've got a wire between two eye hooks that's ready to go home. It's ready to be presented at the sale itself and ready for someone to go home and hang it on a nail. Just a moment. Yes, the picture hangers, perfect. As far as tags, so tags must be firmly attached to the item. Uh, we suggest pearl cotton with an overhand knot. Um, you can use something else, but what is important is that that knot does not come undone. What is important is that the tag with your artist information, with the barcode, uh, does not become separate from the item. All right, so test that knot. We're going to be testing it at physical check-in. Uh, to make sure they're not going to easily come apart. Do not use safety pins because someone can unclip that. Don't use staples. Don't use slippery ribbon. Don't use uh, plastic garment tagging systems because that might damage other items. Don't use zip ties or nylon cord, any other material that doesn't hold a reliable knot. Pearl cotton is our gold standard. Um, for some items like very delicate silk scarves, uh, a relatively thick piece of pearl cotton, you don't want to 
you, you don't want to put holes in your items with that. So you can use uh, thinner thread. Just make sure you have a secure knot. For hats, we ask the tags be uh, affixed to the top so that it is very clear that this is a hat that is from the sale, not a hat that someone walked in with. And finally, tags for items that are hanging on walls should be hanging down from the item. We don't want uh, a, a customer to have to handle the item and risk breaking it in order to find where the tag is. Jewelry and other small items should be mounted on cardstock. So here, this is a really great presentation, not only of the piece of felted jewelry, uh, uh, but no one's going to accidentally slip that into their pocket. Um, it does mean that a piece is difficult to try on, but we have decided uh, for the last several years that the security is more important than uh, a customer's ability to try something on. Here's some other examples. This looks like how you would see jewelry presented at uh, other really nice stores. All right. Your items must be standard compliant and your items must be completely ready for the sale before you bring them to physical check-in. If you have questions about your items after reading the rules and regulations, please email standards at handweaversofboulder.org or you can ask right now. Um, so what I'd like to do, I think, to manage questions is I would like for you to, um, let's see, if you look at participants, you should be able to raise your hand. That will give me an order on which to call on people. You can just raise your hand in your picture if your picture is showing. Uh, except I don't have you in gallery view right now. I'll tell you. Okay. And it's it's also true. Um, uh, not everybody may know how to do the participants thing. Okay. Uh, in that case, I'll I'll take questions. Uh, please remember to unmute your mic before you ask your questions. You can also uh, type a question Harley, in the chat Elko and I will see it. Harley, can you unmute yourself? Hi, Avedon. Uh, thanks, Selena. Um, so when things come, you said to show things. So I have this bag that I knit, but I need to probably needle felt it or decorate it in some way besides putting lining or something like that inside it, if I'm understanding your instructions. Hold on just a moment. Let me get, um, I want to see a larger image of you. So it's just this, I have two of them. It's two mm -hmm. similar little bags. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, those have been crocheted and then felted? Or knit and then felted? Knit and then felted, yes. And then I'm assuming because I should probably line them, but maybe put some other decoration, something else on the outside, not just plain old Clutches. Well, because they've they've uh, they show a, two techniques that we accept the the hand knit and then the felting. You you don't need to line them. If you want to line them, then by all means go for it. Uh, but as they are, they look beautiful and they're uh, admissible for the sale. Okay, thank you. What other questions do we have? I don't know how to do this. Can you hear me, Avadan? Yes, I can. So. Um, I'm just wondering if you're making something like a um, a quilted knitting bag out of beautiful fabrics, but mm -hmm. it's a bag that you might, a shape that you might have seen somewhere else, how do you know if it's different enough uh, so that it's distinguished from something that you could get somewhere else or or that you're not using someone else's pattern, say, to make something? Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. And uh, you touched on a couple of things. Um, and uh, someone else with more expertise, please feel free to chime in or correct me if I say something that is incorrect. So as far as patterns, and I'm familiar with this just from knitting, uh, not from sewing, um, 
but on a pattern, often the designer of the pattern will tell you how they feel about um, their item items made with of items of their pattern being made. They'll tell you how they feel about that being sold. They'll either give you permission or or will not. Um, the pattern itself is is uh, protected under copyright, but as far as um, items, for example, knit from a pattern, that depends on the artist, and you can ask the designer um, what their feelings on that are. Uh, some patterns that are traditional, they, they can't be, they're not copywritten, they're traditional, so there's, you don't need to be concerned about like stealing from a tradition in that sense. As far as uh, commercial patterns of sewn things, What we don't want to see at the sale is something that looks mass produced. Um, so we don't want hundreds of the exact same item. Um, and at, in, in the standards committee, we want, uh, we want to have your items. So I would say that I would, I would want to see, or someone in the standards committee would want to see your item and want you to tell us what did you do? What is, where is your artistic uh, imprint on this? Where do you show your creativity in this item? It may be a, a bag that is, that is simply constructed or, or it might seem basic. I, I apologize for the phrasing. I'm, not, I'm trying to use non-judgmental terms. Uh, but what do you as an artist bring to it? And what do you as an artist want to show at the, the sale through your item? That's, that's the conversation that we want to have in the standards committee. Okay, so does, so that, for, does that help? Say you, say you did Sashiko for your fabric that would be enough then to make something unique and different because yes in your because own. yeah sashiko is embroidery okay and, and i'd and, love to see it <laughs> and the other part of the question might have been uh if if you design a bag uh I, 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 my understanding of, of beach's question was how does standards know that i didn't use a commercial uh pattern to make that bag if it's a simple bag structure so so what differentiates the bag from 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 having used one somebody else's pattern that was part and, of it and selena i guess that would be like you know it's like when you're making a mitten and you know it's how do how do you make a mitten different right you can put a cable in or do colors or whatever so i guess it's it's a larger question right that mm -hmm. we Actually, my understanding is the pattern itself, the piece of paper, how it is arranged, can be copyrighted. Items made from that pattern are not copyrighted. And so even though the designer is saying you can't, you can't do this, you actually can, because copyright does not extend to the item made from it. But I think we all want to see you do your own creativity. So if you've created a beautiful piece of fabric, either weaving or embroidery or something, and you're using a very simple commercial pack or pattern to put that together into a bag, you're fine the way I understand copyright laws. Yes. And you're fine as far as we're concerned because you've made that fabric. Okay. Um, yeah. I altered, I, I've altered these patterns too, you know, quite a bit, but still it's just hard to know what's enough, right? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yes, yeah. it is It is hard to know what's enough. And one of the, um, one of our tasks in the standards committee is to draw that line and then justify it. Okay. Um, which is why we are revising standards every year based on input we get from the guild community. Um, but very good question. Uh, is there anything else that I could, uh, uh, anything I didn't answer for your question? No, no, that's good. Thank you. All right, thank you. What other questions do you have? And remember, if you have your uh, video camera off, I won't be able to see you wave. Does everyone feel confident that they know where to locate the rules and regulations on the website? All right. Do you feel confident that you understand? Oh, sorry. Sorry, I'm turning this like one of my classes. <laughs> It's summer. I'm not teaching. Um, uh, if you come up with questions, uh, then please email me, standards at handweaversofboulder.org. That, uh, that email address is also on the website. Um, 
And thank you very much for your participation. If you, uh, you, you know how to reach me with uh, other questions. Uh, but yeah, thank you for being here. Thank you for participating in the sale. Thank you for thinking ahead. I really appreciate it. And, and I want to add, I want to add that um, Avadan has been recording this. Uh, she's, uh, so we'll have this recording, but we're also going to be doing uh, a, a standards presentations like this uh, next month and the month after. And if you, you know, you got a taste for it now and, and by the next month you got questions, feel free to come back and, and, and bring your bags or your whatever it is and, and, and share then and, um, so we're, we're trying to make as many opportunities as possible for you, for everybody to get a chance to interact with standards before check-in day. Absolutely. All right. Thank you for your participation and we'll uh, see you around.